Hi, I'm Ben Pascoe from LearningSurfPhotography.com and I've been asked a few times now about my Aquatec CR60 water housing that I've converted for use with the Sony A6000 camera. Um, the housing is originally designed for a Canon 60D, which is obviously quite a bit bigger than this smaller mirrorless camera. Um, so I have already adapted it for a 70D, which I got as a, an upgrade to the 60D. Now I've sold that on and I just use the, six, uh, the A6000 in there now. I'm going to talk you through what I did to my housing to make this compatible. Firstly, uh, just a quick rundown of why I did it. Um, the only kind of other housing you've got out there at the moment is uh, the Mekon or Niwa. There's a few different brand names. Um, it's a dive housing. Get them for about $170. Um, they're pretty good value, but uh, they're not really a surf housing. It's for dive, so under the water. Um, rather than on the surface, uh, like you would use one of these Aquatec housings. So I'm familiar with this one. I like the pistol grip style on there. Um, it's uh, something I'm used to using, so that's the main reason for me to use this, rather than, than the uh, picking up a Mekon housing instead. Um, so first things first, what I needed to do was position the Sony camera inside the housing so that the lens obviously comes out through the normal um, uh, lens port hole there um, and is centered in that. Um, this is the, the original base plate that comes with the um, CR60 housing. I've had to file off a little bit of it just to get my 70D on there, but um, for this modification I didn't need to do uh, anything else to this base plate. So it slides in like this, clips in and slides out again so it's nice and easy. Usually you just put a tripod screw through the hole there right into your camera, but if you did that with the A6000, um, it doesn't really fit very well on the actual base plate. Um, it won't line up with the tripod screw hole, um, and also it's gonna to be too low. It's not gonna go through the, the, the center of the lens port hole. So to raise that up, I tried a couple of things, but the easiest way was with this, which is a PU60 quick release plate designed for the Arca Swiss system. So it's compatible with Arca Swiss clamps. Um, you can pick them up on Amazon for about $7. Uh, it's about $4.99 in the UK. Um, it comes with a little tripod screw with a um, kind of flathead screwdriver um, connection there and a little fold out thing that you can kind of hand tighten. So the way you do it is, um, you do actually need another tripod screw and it's a slightly longer one than normal. It's about 10 and a half mil um, high. Um, I'll put a link up below to all the products you need to, to get this adaptation sorted. So about $7 for this one. You can get a pack of two of these for $6.99. Um, so they're, they're pretty cheap. You could botch it together with something else. If you've got something lying around, it might well do the job, just needs to be a bit longer. Um, you'll see why in a second. Um, so your Sony goes on like this, screw it on. I screw it as far forward as I can on this plate um, and then make sure that's nice and tight. Then the good thing about this PU60 plate uh, and the reason that it, um, it's useful in this case is it has a slot, one slot at the top for the camera and then two slots further down um, in case you want to position your camera differently on your plate. Um, what I've used those for is, because they've got a threaded section in those two other holes, you can actually position this and it actually positions itself really nicely on the original Aquatec base plate. And that lines up really well with one of the threaded sections. So you just pop your you bolt through there, screw it on, and you can get that nice and tight. And that locks that in position with your camera on there. Obviously you have to do the camera up first, then do the bolt the plate onto the, the Aquatec plate um, while your camera is all bolted on. Um, it's hard, you have to take them off one at a time as well, so it's a bit of a pain, but it does get it in exactly the right position. And it shifts it forward enough inside the housing to not only put the, um, the lens right the way through the lens hole, which is really important if you're gonna be shooting with 
um, a fisheye. I've got the Samyang 8mm F2.8 fisheye that I use. And this is my LP3 dome port for the housing. So um, what I wanted to do there was obviously to get the, uh, the element of the fisheye far enough forward that you don't get any vignetting. You don't see any of the, the metal surround of the port. So that sliding the camera all the way forward on this plate and then um, having it that little overhang like that allows you to do that. Um, and also good bonuses with it slid forward all that way, your top control here, um, you can, you've got to kind of extend this control a little bit. I use some little foam pads uh, for protecting the bottoms of furniture and chairs and things. You can pick them up. I think there's a kit of uh, hundreds of these things, literally hundreds of them for uh, $5.49 I found on Amazon. I had a few lying around. Um, you can pick them up. I think I picked them up from the pound shop in the UK. So you can definitely find them very, very cheaply. I've just stuck two of them, one on top of the other. They're self-adhesive, so no problem. And you can pull it straight off if you want to use it again with a with a Canon camera. Um, but that extends it just enough so that when this is slid forward, you've actually got control of this top dial as well. So um, in the same way as I'd have the control of the top dial with my Canon cameras, I've got the same control with the Sony. Um, obviously it's got Wi-Fi built in as well and with this Aquatec housing, um, with this kind of plastic polycarbonate material, the Wi-Fi does go through it. So you uh, you can use your phone in a little um, aquapack case or something like that to change the settings. The other port I use is the LP5 flat port, which um, I used to use with my 28mm, my 50mm with the Canon, and now I use that with the Sigma 30mm f2.8 and the Sigma 19mm f2.8. Um, as soon as I can, I'm going to pick up the 60mm f2.8 as well from Sigma because uh, I love the other two lenses and, and I'm sure that's going to be, give me a good, another good option as well. Um, the other one I've got, um, the other port I've got is the LP TZ4, which is originally for the Canon 70 200 f4 lens. Um, as you can see, it's got zoom control on the side so that obviously you can zoom in and out whilst you're in the water. Um, I have managed to get this working with the Sony 55 to 210 mil. Um, obviously, this one actually extends as it zooms, not like the, the 70 to 200, the Canon lens, which stays the same length, it's got like an internal zoom. Um, nevertheless, the length of this it actually works again with the with the camera position slid forward that little bit because of the the PU 60. Um, Quick release plate. I managed to get this to uh, I can I can have it at 55 and not have any vignetting from the end of the port, um, and it can go all the way to 210 freely without any danger of that um, hitting the front element of the port too. Um, the only catch is I have to make the barrel of this lens uh, kind of bigger diameter because it's not obviously um, the, the zoom controls on this port are designed to work with a wider diameter lens, the 7200. I use this, it's like a, it's a, a kind of old aperture ring from an, a really old dive housing that I had to happen to have lying around. Um, but I've also experimented and I can use like, if you use a little strip of neoprene, perhaps if you've got some old uh, wetsuit gloves or boots, then you could just snip the top off that. I, I've got like a little um, couple of inches of this, you fold it back on itself, stick that on there. And then the, the Aquatec, um, this, this is just the bit that's supplied by Aquatec to engage with the control on the port. Um, so you'd pop that around. Obviously in my case, I use this, but you could pad it out with anything you like. Um, getting it in the right position takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's obviously no worse than just getting used to it with the, the 7200 with the, the port as well. So, I've managed to take some shots with this. Um, I'll show you some examples of the shots that I'm getting with the 55 to 210. Um, I've also shot some, been, been really pleased with the results from the 19mm f2.8 from Sigma, um, the Samyang and the 30mm. Um, like I say, I can't wait to get hold of the 60mm from Sigma as well. Um, so there you go, I've got three ports. Um, 
I can use the two-stage pistol grip. That's the last thing. <laughs> the critical thing is to be able to um, release the shutter on the Sony. And for that, all you need is this little thing. This is a, um, it's by DSLR kit and they call it the shutter remote terminal converter cable E3F S2M. I'll put a link up below. Um, likewise, there'll be a link on learningsurfphotography.com. Uh, there'll be a post there which will have the full list of everything you need uh, and a little bit of um, kind of step-by-step -step instruction on how to do this. But this bit's key um, and it's compatible with the A6000 and um, I'm pretty sure any Sony camera with the um, this micro USB smart port, is that what they call it? They call it the multi port, I think. I don't know, it's, it just goes in the side as you'd expect. Um, and then that bit, anything that's compatible with a uh, standard Canon 2.5 mil jack um, trigger release mechanism. So that means my Aquatech CR60. Um, I can also use it with my, um, I've got some YN, uh, sorry, some Yongnuo, let me bring up, RF603C2. So this is a, a wireless remote. So um, this actually has a little uh, functionality on it where you can use it as a wire, wireless um, trigger for your camera, as well as its normal functionality, which is as a flash trigger. Um, instantly, that does work with this as well. So um, there'll be, uh, I'm using this that to, to trigger the flash unit outside the housing, but that's another story. Um, so I could use this cable to trigger the, the A6000 remotely as well. Really handy bit of kit. It cost me, where is it? Um, Five pounds fifty on in the UK. It's nine ninety nine on Amazon. I'll put a link up again to the exact one that I'm using. Um, it's not like obviously there's not much to it. It seems fairly fairly robust. <laughs> I've been um, thrashing it around inside the housing for for a while now, a few months, and, and no no problems at all. Never misfired. Um, so yeah, that allows you to trigger the shutter when you're inside the housing. I've got use of all my lenses, all my Sony lenses. Um, I'm pretty much covered in terms of replacing my favorite Canon lenses in my Actec housing. So um, I think until there's uh, a, a real option for these smaller cameras, so the A6000 being my choice, but because it's a great budget option, um, 11 frames a second and just as I've written on my uh, on learningsurfphotography.com, it's replaced my Canon 70D. It does everything that the 70D does um, that I need it to do. Um, so it's a fantastic bit of kit, but you just can't buy a surf style housing for it. None of the big brands like uh, Aquatech or SPL or Essex Liquid Eye, any of the, the brands I can think of, none of them make one specifically for this camera yet, or even for this kind of form factor of camera. Um, so your best bet would be a custom option or to convert an existing surf housing like the Aquatech or pretty much any SPL. I mean, if you imagine the, the controls are pretty much very similar on pretty much all DSLRs. So if you've got an adapter cable, um, I'll have a look and see if there's one from a, a Nikon connector to, um, to the Sony connector. I'm pretty sure there would be no reason why there wouldn't be. Um, if there isn't, then you could botch one together yourself with, uh, with soldering iron. It's that simple. This is a very quick, very easy um, shutter release. Um, one thing I did note was some of the older cameras like the, the NEX5 series don't have a wired shutter release. So you wouldn't be able to do this kind of adaptation as easily with them. You'd need to somehow be able to tr press the, the physical shutter button, which I can't do on this. Um, and you could probably botch something together that would do it. But obviously it's a lot easier to use the, the pistol grip um, two-stage trigger that I've already got set up on it. Um, so that's it, that's my uh, rambling explanation of, of why and how I've converted my Aquatech housing for my Sony A6000 camera. Um, any questions or uh, anything else you'd like to see in regards to this camera and surf photography then send me an email, it's ben at learningsurfphotography.com. Um, head along to the site for uh, some detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it and the full list of everything you need to buy. Um, I reckon it costs around, well, less than $30 um, to get this all going. So if you do have an old DSLR housing, anything like that lying around, um, or if you can snag one secondhand fairly cheap and you've got this type of camera. Incidentally, I, 
I, it's going to work pretty well with the the Sony A7, A7R. That same um, shutter release cable does the same job with those. So um, even if you did go full frame or something like that, it's going to fit in this housing easily as well. So any of these uh, newfangled mirrorless um, Sony camera bodies, you are going to be able to adapt um, an older housing for. Um, best of luck doing that. Um, I might well pick up one of the cheap Mekong dive housings at some point as well, just to see what they're like. Uh, but for now, this is going to do everything I need it to do. Um, I'm pretty stoked with the results. Um, have a look on learningsurfphotography.com for a few more details and uh, shoot me an email if there's any questions.